If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. It turns out that we can solve this question by using Faraday's law. So let's take a look at that law. So according to Faraday's law, we would have an induced EMF equivalent to the negative rate of change in the magnetic flux. The reason for the negative sign is because the induced flux will tend to oppose the change in magnetic flux. Now, in order to understand this more thoroughly, we have to understand what magnetic flux is. So let's come off on the side and define magnetic flux. And so magnetic flux is simply equal to the product of the magnetic field and the area of the loop. This is true as long as the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the loop, and the question actually states that that is the case. So this is the correct definition of magnetic flux. Now, what we need to do is actually find the derivative of the magnetic flux with respect to time. So we're going to differentiate both sides of this equation. But before we do so, let's not forget that the magnetic field is actually uniform, which means that it's a constant. And so when we compute the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to time, we have to keep in mind that b is a constant. The only thing that is changing is the area a. So let's look at how this derivative would work. On the left side, we're going to have the derivative of the magnetic flux with respect to time. Now because the magnetic field is a constant, we can simply use the constant multiple rule, which means we just retain that constant, and then we multiply by the derivative of the area with respect to time, so dA dt. And now for the area, we recall that the loop is circular, so we can use the expression pi r squared for the area. Let's substitute that in for a. So now we're ready to calculate the derivative of pi r squared with respect to time. We'll move it up here on the top of the screen. To calculate the derivative of pi r squared with respect to time, we're going to use a power rule as well as a chain rule. So for the power rule, we would drag the 2 down into the front of the expression. So we would have 2 pi times the radius. We subtract 1 from the exponent when doing the derivative. So we would have just r to the first power. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the radius with respect to time. So this is the correct expression for the derivative of pi r squared with respect to time. And then the left side is the derivative of the flux with respect to time. So the expression for that derivative of the magnetic flux with respect to time is right here. We're going to substitute that into our Faraday's law equation. So we've made that substitution, and at this point we can simply plug in the known values. The magnetic field is given to us in Tesla, the standard unit. The radius is given in centimeters, so we'll have to convert that into meters by multiplying by 10 to the minus 2. And then the rate at which the radius is changing, or dr dt, is given to us as well in centimeters, so we'll have to multiply that by 10 to the minus 2. So with those two conversions, we can plug in the known values. So we've gone ahead and plugged in the known values. One thing you'll notice when we plugged in for the dr dt, we included this minus sign right here. And the reason for that is that the question states that the loop is actually shrinking at that instantaneous rate of 75 centimeters per second. So because the loop is shrinking, that means that we have to include this negative sign to show that indeed that is the case, that the radius is actually getting smaller as the loop shrinks. So just make sure you include that negative sign. And then when you compute this out, you should get roughly 0.452. And then the standard unit of EMF will be volts. And so this is the correct answer to the question.